In this video we're going to generate toolpaths on the vectors that we created in the first part of this tutorial where we did the design work. We're going to start by doing a simple v-carve toolpath to engrave the decoration into the top of the panel. Then we're going to show you how you can set up a special shaped cutter, in this case the raised panel OG shape, and how we can add that to the tool database within the software. We're then going to generate a profile cut around the outside shape of our panel in order to create that nice flowing um, raised panel shape that you can see on the screen here. So let's start a new copy of the software. So let's go ahead and open um, the file that we created in the vector layout part of this tutorial. Now click on the uh, open existing file option and from within the project folder we're going to load the file cabinet door vector.crv hit open so there we can see the design we created and um, first operation I'd like to do here is to calculate the V carving uh, on the top of our panel so we're just going to select all the data we've got here and I'm actually just going to group this together so I'm just going to hit G on the keyboard to group that and that will just make it easy now for me to select that um, with just one click without having to worry about picking up anything else I know that all those vectors are going to be v-carved so that's just a nice way of keeping this organized I'm going to come over to the toolpaths tab so I'm going to click on the icon here to switch to toolpaths tab. Um, shortcut key for that would actually be F12 on the keyboard. And F11, um, if you uh, wanted to learn the shortcut keys, would take you back to the drawing tab. So I'll just demonstrate that. If I hit F11, it opens the drawing tab and closes the toolpath tab. Hit F12, then it uh, opens the toolpath tab and closes the drawing tab. So with our uh, VCarve vectors selected, we're going to come over and first thing we're going to do before we calculate a toolpath is to set up the material or check our material setup so I'm going to click on the set button here and the uh, Z0 set to the top of the block which is correct 0.75 three quarters of an inch is the correct thickness um, for drawing or for layout I had the datum set in the middle of the part now we're coming to machine it I'd actually set like to set the datum to the lower left hand corner of my material so that now where the uh, red square is here in the lower left part of the white area that's now going to be X0, Y0 so we've just changed that there we're going to check the uh, rapid gaps um, in here for the clearance and plunge and the start position will enter a value of half an inch so we can go ahead now and hit OK once we're happy with that making sure we've still got our V carving vectors selected I'm going to click on the icon uh, to go into the VCarve toolpath. So we're going to do a nice simple VCarve in this case. We're going to um, machine this right into the top of the panel. So start depth will be zero. The tool is going to be a 90 degree V bit. Um, we already have that selected. Um, however, we could hit select and go into the tool database and pick that and then just check the parameters. If we're happy with them, we can hit OK. Of course, if you are planning to machine this yourself, you need to make sure that you pick appropriate values, parameters, tooling, and everything that will be safe and uh, will work for the material and your particular setup and your machine. Because this is just a simple V-carve, no flat area clearance tool required, we can just come down to the bottom and I'm going to enter a name V-carve decoration, hit calculate, We've come into the uh, preview toolpaths. We can select uh, whatever material we'd like to use. I'll just leave it on the oak medium choice there. And then we can go ahead and click on the button to preview selected toolpath. I can see we have the tool switched on to animate and draw at the moment, which is why we saw that um, in the preview there. So happy with the way that looks for my V carving. So I'm going to go back to the 2D view and uh, the next thing I want to do is set up the tooling so that we can do our profile cut around the outside border shape and create our OG profile. So I'm going to close the preview toolpaths um, form there. 
So the tool that we're going to use for cutting the border shape around our raised panel is a specialty tool that's been designed specifically for that job and it has a special OG profile. Any time that we want to use a tool that doesn't fit one of the standard configurations that we have in the software such as a ball nose or radius end mill, end mill, v-bit, those type of things then we'll need to specify it by drawing a vector that represents part of the profile of the tool. Now you can either draw that straight within the software here or it may be, um, as with many tooling manufacturers, that you're able to get a profile in a vector format from their website. A lot of tooling manufacturers that do specialty tools might provide a DXF or an EPS um, which is the outline of the tool to help you uh, specify the geometry in a CAD package. So I have a vector that represents the tool we're going to um, use. So I'm going to come up to File and uh, Import and say Import Vectors. And from the project folder, I'm going to choose the file RPOG. That stands for Raised Panel OG EPS and hit Open. Now I can see at the bottom left hand corner where my tool has been imported into here. To make it uh, a little easier to work with, what I'm going to do is just go back across to the drawing tab. So I'm going to hit F11 on the keyboard and under the layer manager, I'm going to come under here. I'm going to right mouse click over this layer name and I'm just going to say that I want to show only this. So what that's going to do is undraw the other layers, leaving me with just a layer that has the tool on it drawn. And if you remember from the drawing part of this uh, particular tutorial, when we import something, it will be automatically put onto its own layer. So that's why we had that layer, which was created by the software when we imported it. So I'm going to hit close on this. To make it a little easier to work with, I'm going to center it in the middle of the part. So I'll make sure it's selected and hit F9 on the keyboard, which is the shortcut key, to center anything I've got selected in the middle of my work area. Now if we zoom in here, you can see the profile of the tool. It's quite a wide tool that's designed to cut this kind of flowing OG shape into the side of our raised panel. But the only part of this that we need uh, when we specify the tool in the tool database is just the right hand side without the uh, rest of it being closed in. So we're going to need to edit this vector before we can use it to define our form tool. So let's click on the vector to reselect it. I'm going to go into node editing mode. I could come over to the icon here, or we could hit N on the keyboard, the shortcut key. There I can see the individual constituent parts of my vector, and I can make edits to them. As I move the cursor over the different parts of the vector, it changes to show me I'm either over a node, or in this case, when I see that little wave, that I'm over a span. What I want to do is delete this top span to open this vector up. So I'm going to right mouse click on there, go down to delete span. And then for this middle one, I want to divide this in two. So I'm going to drag a little uh, selection box around the virtual midpoint so it's selected and shows up in red. And then I'm going to right mouse click on that and go down to cut vector. That's now divided this in half. So I can click on this side and hit delete in order to get rid of that left hand side part of our tool shape. Now I'm going to come out of node editing mode. So notice the cursor at the moment, that type of arrow is showing me I'm in node editing mode. If I hit escape on the keyboard, then that exits node editing mode and now I'm back into regular selection mode and you can see that the arrow's changed. So now we have the piece of geometry that we're going to need in order to define a custom tool within the software. Essentially the right hand side of the tool profile with no top and no left hand edge on it. You need to make sure that you have this vector selected and it's the only selected vector when we go into the tool database and we um, go ahead and tell the software to generate a new tool. So I have that selected. I'm going to hit F12 on the keyboard which is the shortcut key to come across to the toolpath tab. I'm going to click on the display tool database icon Remember that vector selected and now what I'm going to do is come down and say that I want to create my new form tool in my specialist area of the tool database. You can put it anywhere, you can organize your tools however it makes sense to you. Here I'm going to put it in that area and I'm going to click on the button that says new. 
and from the tool type drop down I'm going to choose the option form tool and as long as I have a valid vector selected when I click on that the software will automatically populate the information inside of the tool database so from the selected vector you can see the software has created a little avatar here to show us what the shape looks like and it's picked up the size of that vector to give us the diameter of the tool the top here it's also given us automatically a name that's based says form tool and that size if we wanted to we could come in here and we could uh, change the name of the tool I just missed an E out there so raised panel OG in this case and then what you do is look at the tooling manufacturers um, suggested settings in order to populate the rest of the information in here so I may come down and uh, say that we're going to run past depth of 0.2 of an inch step over one we're not really going to be stepping over with this because we're unlikely to do a sort of pocketing or raster style toolpath so uh, past depth is important though in there spindle speed feed and plunge so we're going to enter values that would be appropriate for the material we were cutting and an appropriate tool number if we had a, a uh, tool holder hit apply that's now been added to my list you can see under this specialist area and that will always be available to me from the tool database from now on here I'm just going to hit OK and now we're ready um, to switch on our geometry again and actually calculate the toolpath using that tool that we've just added so let's hit F on the keyboard to fit um, the job setup area into our window I'm going to go back over to our um, drawing tab so I'm going to hit F11 on the keyboard and from the uh, drop down layer list I'm going to undisplay import RPOG so I'm going to click on the light bulb so that's not displayed and I'm just going to switch on um, our layer 1 which is the data that we've or the layer that we've got that's got our two vectors on it for the outline and we'll select layer 1 as our current layer in case we create anything new so let's go ahead and hit close so when we did our design layout we created the outside shape for our door and then we'd offset this vector by one and three eighths of an inch and the value of one and three eighths of an inch was specifically um, got from the information of the tooling manufacturer who suggested that that is the width that you're expected to cut the OG with that particular tool so essentially we took our outline we've offset it inwards by the value that was recommended and we're going to profile around this inner edge in order to create our um, OG cut so I need to select this inner vector I'm going to hit F12 on the keyboard to go back to the toolpath tab I'm going to go into the profile toolpath Within here, I want a start depth of zero, and cut depth is going to be half an inch. Again, this is information from the tooling manufacturer of how deep you're expected to cut with that particular tool. We're going to hit select on the tool database, and we're going to choose from the specialist area the raised panel OG tool. So we can check our parameters there. I'm happy with them. I've just set that up, so that's OK. We want to cut outside of this vector. We want the edge of the tool to run around this. That's why we offset it by that distance. So I'm going to change the name to Profile OG, hit Calculate, and we're going to preview that toolpath now. So there's a couple of things that we should notice from the preview here. One is that with such a wide tool that part of the tool is cutting past the edge of the job. I'd need to be um, sure that anything I had around this material, clamps or other material, was not going to be right next to that edge there and would have enough clearance for that to miss it or I would want to come in here and change the size of my material or change some of the parameters to adjust that. So that's one thing to be aware of. For this particular example I'm not going to worry about that. The other thing I can notice is the corners as this has cut around the sharp corner of the vector it has rolled around which is the default behavior for the software when it's profiling in most cases when you're for instance cutting something out then you don't really see any issue with that because it just comes here cuts here and you get a nice square edge when you're using a shaped tool like this though because it's rolling around it's rounding um, that corner 
Now the chances are we probably want that to have a more like a mitre look corner to it. So what we may want to do is just undo the last preview here. So if I click on the undo last button that will get rid of the preview of our OG toolpath. And then I'm going to come down to the toolpath list and I'm going to double click to go in and edit that toolpath. And how we stop it from rolling around the corners like that is to come down to the corners area here and to check the option that says sharp external corners. So now what the software is going to do is bring the tool all the way past and then take a right angle instead of it curving and rolling around that corner. So if we hit calculate we can see the new toolpath we've created there but really the best way we're going to see this is to go ahead and say preview selected toolpath and there we can see that cutting around the part and now we've got these nice square corners on the top and bottom of our panel. So our final task is to create the profile cut for our raised panel. I'm going to come back to the 2D view, I'm going to select the outer vector, I'm going to close the preview toolpath menu that were in there and click on the profile toolpath again now this time I want to cut all the way through the material so I'm going to put in 0.75 need to hit select change the tool to a standard uh, quarter inch M mil 0.25 M mil hit OK and I'm going to um, just edit that and tell it that I'm going to cut a quarter of an inch on each pass so that will change the passes to three instead of six need to make sure we're cutting on the outside of this part which is what I've got there and we'll call this profile cutout, hit calculate. Now if we preview that toolpath we can see that cutting through the outside there. And if we want to we could double click on this waste material with the uh, mouse. So if I just put the cursor over the bit that I want to get rid of and double click then that will delete that and it will show me uh, without the um, waste material there around it. If you wanted to, you can use the button here to save the preview image. You just tilt it around using the left mouse key into a view that you're happy with. You can hold both mouse button down and move the mouse to pan it. Or you can use the right mouse button and move the mouse in order to zoom in and out on it. When you've got it in a view that you're happy with, we could click on this Save Preview Image button. And that would allow us to save uh, various image types. And we could use that for customer approval or promotional material, putting on your website, something like that, in order to demonstrate what you can do. So... The last job with this, of course, if we close the preview toolpaths, would be to save our toolpaths and send them to the CNC. So we'd choose them in the order we wanted to output, hit the save toolpaths icon, uh, go ahead and choose the right post processor, click on save toolpaths in order to save, give that a file name, save the first one, then we'd select the second one and hit save, and then select the third one and hit save and give each of those a name and be able to then put them uh, onto the CNC machine and cut your raised panel. So before we conclude this, um, we should save this file so that we have a copy of it in the projects folder, come up to file and save as and we'll call this cabinet door TP to show that we've got toolpaths in it .crv and that'll be saved there if you wanted to take a look at it so let's close the save toolpaths form there just take a moment to review some of the things we've looked at in this video we started with the file that we created in the companion tutorial to this where we did our vector layout went ahead and calculated a simple v-carving toolpath to put our decoration on top of the panel then we imported some vector geometry that represented the profile of our tool we then used that with a little bit of editing to create a form tool a special shape tool that we can select within the software and then calculated a profile toolpath around a vector that we'd offset to allow for the width of the tool and how much we wanted to cut when we previewed it we saw that the um, tool was rolling around the corners and so we went back in and edited the toolpath and chose the square corners option so that we would get it to create the nice kind of mitre effect of the corners that we can see on the door here. And that concludes this tutorial.